Hi everybody, Lance from ThetaTraders.com here, wearing my academic decathlon shirt. I'm doing regional competition right now down in Corpus Christi, Texas. So I have a little bit of time to do a video while they're taking their multiple choice tests. This video I'm going to go over a few of the trades I did this week at ThetaTraders.com. I'm also going to look at the profits for the week. It's a relatively slow week, but hopefully you want to analyze it. So. A little tasty trade platform here, looking at the activity in the last seven days. We'll just start from the top. I uh, did a safeguard trade on Friday. I actually did it in a Zoom meeting with other members. So sold uh, four, so it's essentially two contracts. Sold four of the 42.50 puts. It's a 0.07 delta, a little bit higher than I normally do. Uh, the 0.08 delta was paying the 20 credit, but it was overextended at 4,300. A little bit so I took a little bit less credit and 1875 credit here at the 4250 bought uh, two debit spreads at the 4750 bought two of those puts sold the 4700 two of those for a debit of 835 put in a limit at 850 and got a little bit better fill there so if you take 1875 times four subtract two of the 8.35s that'll be the total premium collected and you times it by the 5 multiplier for MES to show the return there. A um, little bit low on buying power. So if you see my option BP is 33000 and it's a $61,000 account. So I ended up buying 10 shares of bill. Uh, that gives some T-bill interest. Uh, should be an ex-dividend date for early February coming in. So I'm at 210 shares right now of bill. So I guess good monthly income that's pretty much guaranteed. I uh, did a 4,700 put, and then I bought a 4,800, 4,700. This is a ratio spread, and I treat it as one naked put at that 4,700, and then a put debit spread at 4,800, 4,700. If the market stays where it is, this will make about $50 in profit. Not a huge return there, looking at about $1,100 $1, or so in buying power. The bought put does help with your buying power on it. So not a huge return if the market stays where it is or goes up or down slightly. But if we get below that 4,800 put and we get close to the 4,700, that put debit spread will be worth quite a bit more than that 1,350. I'm going to treat this as the put debit spread will be a separate trade. That 4,700 was right near the expected move. So I'm willing to actually take assignment on that and wheel it. I also did the MESM contract instead of MESH, so it's the next expiration cycle, so I could easily wheel it. I'm also considering doing a covered strangle on that, where you might get near full profit on that put debit spread. If I get a sign on the 4700, I'll sell calls against it, and also sell another put even lower than the 4700, and then I'll be a covered strangle at that point. It's a little bit more complicated type trade. Definitely go that, over that with my members at thetatraders.com. Uh, for corn, we closed relatively early at 1.5. Let's see if I can find it. So Z, C, it was past the seven days. So it was about 12 or so days here. So we look at Z, C on the 11th, so about a little bit more, about 14 days. I sold for 2.25, bought it back for 1.5. It's a little bit quicker than the 50% return, but it happened in a much shorter time period. So we're at about 70 days out. I was able to take a little over 25%, about 30% profit in 14 days. So the return per day was a good return. So I took it out early. SPX have been doing zero DTEs on that. I have a specific strategy guide exactly how I'm doing these, but I'm going to be selling them off my excess buying power. And I have a lot of extra BP, especially right now with the market at all time highs. I'm able to sell um, just one. I'm looking for pretty wide widths. I did a 20 width here. I enter in the trade near the market open. So it was nine minutes after the open. And then I just let it expire worthless or stop out. This one worked out $45. Not a huge return in your buying power, but again, that's with excess BP. I'm just keeping that trade in for the day, and I'm not paying any margin interest. So 
extra $45 is good for $61,000 account. And I'll do those whenever I'm available. It's not going to be every single day. Um, for HG, I did a new strangle and still working on that. So waiting for a good till canceled order there. I got filled at 0.0175 and then I put a limit order for 50% profit there. So it's still currently in that trade. It's only been a few days. And another SPX, two more of those RDTEs, made $40 made $30, and that was about it for the week. Let's look at the spreadsheet. So, wait for it. On the spreadsheet for our data, we have Netlick at 61,537. The theta is a bit low at 108. I look for the monthly return. So theta divided by four and then times it by 30, that's the approximate amount of income you'll take in per month. Obviously it depends on your DTEs and whatnot, but looking at $810 in approximate income for a month off 61,000. So it's a bit low there. My theta percent's a bit low as well, 0.17. So I'll be looking into adding on a few extra trades to get my target two and a half percent a month there. Uh, Delta's at 71, perfectly fine, pretty low percent there. Buying power's at 47.7%, which is low. That includes bill, so I'm even lower than that. I'm at a little under 40% if you count the bill income. I ended up buying 10 more shares of bill, and I'm still under the BP. There's a chance I buy even more bill to get the next um, ex-dividend. So there's a chance that I'll do that. Futures profit for the week in all those positions I showed before. Over here, your profits. I did have some safeguard trades from a while back, and the put debit spreads expired worthless. Still made a good return on these on the naked puts, much higher than these numbers. I treat these as if I make a credit on the naked puts, but then I lose on the put debit spread, I'm counting the put debit spread as a loss, and then I count the total income from the naked puts as a credit. So it sounds like a more accurate accounting way to do it. So it does show a loss in the second column, but overall was a win. So and now just a general overview of the week. I go over all of these types of trades exactly where I enter and exit. If you're interested in selling options for premium, have a large community of like-minded like members, over 200 members right now. I've got quite a few beginners that I'm helping out with. So if you're brand new to selling options, we could do one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions, group Zoom sessions. You can contact me anytime um, on the Discord, or you could ask the group, and there's other like-minded individuals to help each other out. So being in this community is very helpful for making the returns that you want and learning these strategies. Um, in the next about month or two, maybe, it might even be longer than that, I'm looking into doing a whole video series on the analogies of teaching my chemistry and intro to physics that I currently do, and I've been doing it for 19 years now. And I'm going to relate that as an analogy to how I teach at datatraders.com. So it's not only about looking at my alerts and then taking the alerts, and that's it. I want to be able to teach you exactly the reasons why I do the trades I do. Other members are posting their trades and they give their reasonings as well. So it's very helpful for members to keep themselves accountable and to join and grow in our community. So if you're interested in joining, you can look in the link in the description down below at datatraders.com. You guys have a good rest of the weekend and I'll see you guys on the next one.